Derek Pack and the Naturopath from New Zealand. Thanks for coming back. I've got an email here from someone who wants me to answer a question. So I'm going to read this out to you. And the answer may benefit more just than this one person. Hi Eric, I've seen you in your clinic several years ago. I'm pretty sure it was regarding menopause. Um, that these symptoms were at the time distressing. This lady writes here. I went into menopause at 43 after having my third baby. I'm 54 years old now and the symptoms are diminishing. However, I have a few that I can't seem to get a handle on. I still wake in the night, mostly thirsty and with a hot flush. No sweats though. Sometimes it feels like hourly. The biggest bugbear is weight gain around my waist. I've gained eight kilograms. It's about 17 pound. Uh, nothing seems to help. I've tried most things and I'm wanting to stop and hopefully reverse this with food, rest and exercise. Any hot tips would be gladly received. No pun intended, the hot tips. Um, I look forward to reading about your, reading your blogs and will forward my, your email to my family members as your work is invaluable. Thanks for that. Um, and this lady lives around the corner from me, not far away. And your garden and home look amazing. Thank you for that. I won't mention this person's name. So what we've established here is the lady's 54. She's got weight around her waist. She's hot. She's flushing, but no sweating. So obviously we've got menopause there at 54. So what's the issue with the weight? Well, <clears throat> we're going to get a hormonal redistribution, usually sort of mid 40s to sort of late 50s. So this is quite normal. And a lot of people my age, you know, will slowly notice things like, like more hair around the ears or nose or face, more hair on different parts of the body. Uh, there could be thinning in some areas, more hair in others, could be weight distribution. Guys often will pack a bit of weight around here and many women will have get more the, the pear shaped kind of body, which is quite common. So there's a couple of things you can do. You know, you don't have to do hormone testing, but saliva or salivary, I think they call it in America, saliva hormone testing is quite effective. And there are naturopaths that can do these tests uh, if you look them up. So to determine your estrogen levels, your progesterone levels, your testosterone levels, but also your cortisol levels, looking at different hormone levels. I'd also recommend that you get a, a thyroid function test done a thyroid stimulating hormone and we're going to look at the hormones T3 and T4. If you want to go that extra mile you can look for reverse T3 a hormone as well. So the hormone profile for the thyroid is quite clever because if you've got a lower metabolic rate yes you can still have heat in the body and have a low metabolism. Um, this could explain why your body's not burning off that extra you know fat especially if you're exercising. So and the other thing is, are you tired? Are you sleeping okay? What's your libido like? Like all these things are important questions. When I um, work with female patients here in my room, I'd often ask them a whole lot of questions which would determine what issues they've got with which type of hormones, like, like progesterone, for example. Uh, women with low progesterone tend to have more anxiety um, and then they have more issues around phobias and anxiety and uh, breathing issues and skin issues. They can't sleep properly. Women with estrogen issues can have many different issues. A list is as long as like two arms put together. <clears throat> so how do you balance these hormones? Well, a good thing to do at 54, in my opinion, is to have a glass of soy milk per day or eat more soy into your, put more soy into your diet. Uh, Non-genetically modified soy, phytoestrogens, is quite a clever thing to do. I find that always seems to help if you do that. The other uh, um, trick is to put seaweed in your diet. Seafood or seaweed, iodine in particular. So iodine can have a massive effect on the weight around the waist for many women. Just one drop of iodine per day, two drops can make incredible difference over a period of six months. So, and again, thyroid testing probably would be good. Weight around the waist, I'd be walking every single day. Uh, at least three to five kilometers per day and uh, get up early because it's summertime now here in NZ so walking every day um, the other one is the carbohydrate selection look very carefully at what you're eating and how much you're eating and when are you eating so start with just normal three meals a day what you want to do is very slowly reduce the portion sizes of these meals and snack on other kind of foods than you're probably snacking on now to fill you up 
never go shopping without having a full tummy all right especially uh, in menopause i find because it's easy to go for something sweet so alcohol chocolate i'm sure you're not doing any of that now but if you are uh, there's no point talking about weight if you're looking at any kind of a you know soda or alcohol or takeaway food or things like that so activity's got to go up metabolism's got to go up and portion size is going to go down and that's going to result in weight loss i've often said to patients in my room and some of them were desperate to lose weight that if i put them on an island with the coconut tree and a fishing rod and i'd come back in a year they'd probably be down to a size six because there's no fridge there's no places where you can get takeaway food or things like that so it's a lot of its discipline it's actually disciplining what you eat and how you eat be careful when you've got friends over especially in your 50s or 60s because it's it could easily become a food or a drinking orgy so just be careful so yeah the testing uh, would be quite a smart thing to do i think if it's resistant that's providing you've done everything in your power you know in terms of exercise and diet uh, to lose weight if it's stubborn and it can't come off you know in spite of you know really looking at what you're eating you need to definitely get the metabolic rate uh, checked out and estrogen and progesterone can have a, a huge bearing on thyroid health for example so they can really affect your metabolism quite a lot but just by walking every single day that is going to drive your metabolic rate up and if you're feeling excessively tired with that walking you probably need to look at your adrenal glands and I think they would be affected because many people in their 50s have got adrenal problems. So you've got three kids, so you're bound to have adrenal issues. So when cortisol goes down, um, you'll find that the appetite can be all over the place and the sleep can be everywhere. Uh, the immune system can be down and there can be inflammation in the body. So the adrenals really need um, attention. So, and again, a saliva test, uh, as I mentioned before, to determine the cortisol levels. Uh, probably would be quite a good idea. Um, what else can I talk to you about? There are many different herbal formulas you can take. Uh, health food shops will often have a good estrogenic kind of a formula, you know, with uh, herbs like Dioscorea, which is wild yam. Uh, there are many different um, good herbs you can take for menopause, and they work quite well. So, but go to a health food shop and uh, have a chat there with the staff and I'm sure that you're going to get a nice herbal formula. So it's the combination of the testing, the diet, uh, the activity uh, should make a, a tremendous amount of difference in this case. Anyway, let me know how you go with that and I hope that answers some of your questions. Did I forget to tell you? Don't forget to walk every day. Thanks for the question.